Hi everyone. In this presentation, I am going to talk about plastic bronchitis, which is a rare disease, but it is good to know about it and about the treatment options. These are my outlines. What is plastic bronchitis? From the name, it is something like plastic and it is happening in the bronchus. So it is the presence of inspissated tracheobronchial secretion which form cast. These secretions are high in volume and they are viscous and can obstruct the airway partially or even completely. This is a normal bronchi which looks clean and with normal diameter and this bronchi is narrowed and filled with thick secretions and almost obstructed. Plastic bronchitis can happen in many conditions, like bronchopulmonary bacterial infection, tuberculosis, asthma, cystic fibrosis, inhalation of foreign bodies, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, bronchitis, and chronic bronchitis. And also, it can happen in cardiac patients after Fontan procedure, which is our focus today. The pathophysiology is not well understood, but different mechanisms are reported as possible explanations, including abnormal pulmonary lymph flow or leakage, which is suggested because the cast was seen to contain lipid, protein, and lymphocytes. Plastic bronchitis patients who underwent autopsy were found to have dilated and ruptured pulmonary lymphatic vessels and the fluid within the alveoli was chyle. In addition to that, it is thought to happen because of elevated systemic venous and pulmonary arterial pressure which affects the drainage of thoracic duct into great veins and as a result of high lymphatic pressure, it causes break in the mucosal integrity and injury to the alveolar capillary barrier leading to leakage of chyle. However, there is often a disconnection between an individual patient's fontan hemodynamic, I mean the degree of central venous hypertension, and the development of plastic bronchitis. It is unclear why a minority of patients develop plastic bronchitis and others do not. Normally, thoracic duct drains into the innominate vein. But if there is any injury to the thoracic duct during cardiac surgery affecting this drainage or the pressure in the vein is very high, lymph will leak to airway causing a formation of a cast. This is a very good figure to explain what happens in patient postfontan. The human body is normally in a state of capillary filtration equilibrium. Fluid filters into tissue spaces at the arteriolar end of capillaries and is reabsorbed at the venous end of the capillary. Approximately 10% of tissue fluid which fails to reabsorb is taken up by small lymphatic capillaries, which then drain into larger lymphatic channels, then ultimately drain into the thoracic duct, which itself drains into the innominate vein that I talked about in the previous slide. Capillary filtration equilibrium depends on mean capillary hydrostatic pressure, which is greatest at the arteriolar end leading to filtration, and, and least at the venous end leading to reabsorption. Any rise of pressure at the venous end would result in raised capillary hydrostatic pressure at the venular end preventing reabsorption of the filtrate so more fluid in the lymphatic channels lead to higher lymphatic pressures and subsequently leakage. This explains why patient postfontan develop pleural and pericardial effusion. This loss of this filtration equilibrium may explain the development of plastic bronchitis because of leakage of, or, or, of lymph in the airway. There are two types of plastic bronchitis, type 1 which is inflammatory or cellular and type 2 which is non-inflammatory. The cast in type 1 contains eosinophils, fibrin, small amount of mucin, 
and is seen more in pulmonary conditions such as asthma or diffuse mucositis. The cast in type 2 contain mucin, little or no fibrin, and a lake of cellular content, and reported in patients with surgically corrected congenital heart disease. In patients with Fontan, there is overlap of the pathological classification of the cast that they produce. The diagnosis of plastic bronchitis is established after visualization of bronchial casts that are either expectorated by patient or removed by bronchoscopy. This is the cast which looks thick and taking the shape of bronchial trees. This bronchoscopy views showed non-obstructing cast in the left side and partially or almost fully obstructing cast in the right side. Patients with blastic bronchitis have dyspnea, hypoxemia, fever and cough and their clinical picture mimic foreign body aspiration. In most of the time, it was reported within one to three years after Fontan completion. The X-ray finding is not specific and shows infiltration like any other pulmonary disease. But in this X-ray, there is complete wh white out of the left lung, which indicates complete occlusion of the left main bronchus. This is a CT scan that shows cast in the airway. Another one which shows complete occlusion of the airway by a cast. The management of plastic bronchitis is based on case reports and case series and expert opinion, and it targets relieving symptoms in most of the time. I divide all management options into three main domains, Fontan hemodynamic, airway clearance, and prevention of cast formation. If Fontan patient has high pulmonary vascular resistance, giving pulmonary vasodilators may improve Fontan hemodynamic and improve capable pulmonary flow and cardiac output. Fenestration or refenestration have been reported in case reports to be helpful. This is a case report of a five-year-old girl who had undergone an extracardiac fenestrated fontan repair as a component of staged palliation of tri for tricuspid atresia. Six weeks following surgery, she presented with airway obstruction, coughing a bronchial cast. She didn't respond to medical therapies and therefore underwent cardiac catheterization to open the fenestration after which the symptoms of blastic bronchitis result. It is extremely important to clear the airway in order to improve respiratory insufficiency. This can be done by enhancing cast expectoration and by inducing lysis of cast. Multiple agents can be used to achieve these two purposes including bronchodilators, hypertonic saline, cyst physiotherapy, and bronchoscopy to remove the cast. To help dissolving thick cast, mucolytic and fractionated heparin and fibrinolytic were used in some cases. To reduce inflammation, steroid can be used and macrolid is given to prevent infection. Bronchodilators can ease the expectoration of cast by relaxing bronchial smooth muscles. Hypertonic saline will, in, will induce osmotic gradient and help in hydrating the airway to promote airway mucociliary clearance and it induces cough as well. Aggressive chest physiotherapy is mandatory in those patients to help movement of secretions and expectoration. It can be done by hand or more effectively by vest physiotherapy, especially it needs to be done very frequently. Thick cast and in patients who don't respond to other medical therapies may need frequent sessions of bronchoscopy to clear the airway. Inhaled or systemic steroid is given to suppress inflammation 
and reduce mucus production. Mucolytic agents like N-acetylcysteine and Dornase alpha are helpful to reduce mucosal viscoelasticity. Fibronolytic has been used for patients with plastic bronchitis like inhaled TBA to dissolve the cast, especially if it contains fibrin. Unfractionated heparin was given as inhalation in some cases to prevent conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. It has anti-inflammatory and immunoregulatory properties, and it was used as subcutaneous in multiple reported cases. This table summarizes almost all medical therapies that are used for blastic bronchitis with route of administration and the doses. Is it possible to prevent cast formation instead of just treating it? Multiple interventions were described and reported to be successful that include thoracic duct ligation, decompression of the thoracic duct, thoracic duct embolization, and selective embolization of abnormal lymphatic collaterals. To know the exact areas of, of lymphatic leak, nuclear scintigraphy or MR lymphoangiography can be done prior to these interventions. To conclude this uh, presentation, Blastic bronchitis is a rare disease. It is highly variable and potentially fatal, which arises from numerous pathologic mechanisms. Despite suggestion of multiple treatment modalities in the literature, which is based on case reports and case series most of the time, none have strong level 1 or 2 scientific evidence supporting their use. Recurrence rates and overall mortality remain high. Early diagnosis is very important, and aggressive measures to remove rigid casts are necessary to manage these children who may require even ECMO for hemodynamic support. Thank you very much.